five minute mark. So Bryce, this is it here. I knew Tim Tam would come in sometime. She's been sitting right here waiting to get in here. <laughs> Hey there, friend. Welcome to another Thursday Collection Connection, where we're still playing that game that's just an excuse to talk about records. Uh, I play the game with my brother, Plastic Eric, from the Plastic Soundwave Cult channel, and uh, you can follow along with the game. He makes his plays every Monday, mine every Thursday, and you can keep up with us by subscribing to both channels. In Eric's last video, he gave me Jane's Addictions, Strays, um, it was one I had not heard before. I do have uh, nothing shocking, but even by the time of Ritual De Lo Habitual, I had kind of tuned out a little bit from Jane's Addiction. And listening to Strays, what struck me kind of was the competence of it, uh, which is sort of damning with faint praise, as they say. Uh, it was not at all difficult to listen to. Uh, but it didn't feel like it had a ton of personality, like it was just competent hard rock um, with maybe uh, the riches, if I'm thinking of the right song, uh, feeling like a centerpiece, maybe having uh, a little more juice than some of the other tracks. But like the open, it opened on a track with a great riff, easy to listen to from the first go, but didn't feel like anything stand out to me necessarily. It just felt very competent. Um, so make of that what you will. Um, what it made me think of, some of the things that it made me think of uh, were the fact that uh, Harry Farrell gave his name or took his name, uh, stage name from a pun, a loose pun on the word peripheral. Uh, I tried to think of other artists who might have done that. I know I always think with Adam Ant, the word adamant, but I'm not sure if he did that on purpose, because I know that's also not his name. He's Stuart Goddard. I already forget Perry Farrell's real name, but I don't think it's very rock and roll. Um, so I didn't go with that. And what I did go with uh, was my first association every time I think about Jane's Addiction is, of course, the fact that Perry Farrell founded the uh, Lollapalooza Music Festival. And at first I was going to go in the direction of Bob Geldof, uh, who was kind of the uh, progenitor, I guess, of that sort of thing, a musician taking on, but his was more for a charitable cause uh, the, with the Live Aid and uh, the Band Aid. So it didn't feel like quite the same thing, so I thought, well... What about other 90s music festivals? Uh, a la Lollapalooza. A la Lollapalooza. I'll say that a few times fast. And uh, that brought me straight to uh, Lilith Fair, who, which was uh, co-founded by an artist. And uh, of course I'm talking about Sarah McLaughlin. And so the connection I'm making is uh, with Sarah McLaughlin's Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. Towards or toward? Towards. Fum fumbling, fumbling towards saying, fumbling towards ecstasy. It's a 1993 album. It was her third album. Uh, she was successful kind of right off the, the bat. Sorry, my foot all of a sudden itches and I'm scratching my foot with my other foot. Um, this is the only Sarah McLachlan album I have. Uh, this period of time, from about 93 to 97 or so, was a little bit of a black hole for me, musically. I was not a grunge guy. And um, since grunge sort of obliterated everything else <laughs> in the landscape, um, the college rock, uh, the indie rock, uh, that was not uh, grunge. It felt like I didn't hear anything, anything new for a long time. And it felt, uh, I started to get into a period of, of old mandom that maybe all the music that I was going to like had already been made. 
Uh, and it really took Ben Folds and uh, Radiohead's OK Computer to kind of pull me out and get, it, uh, get me excited about new music again. Uh, and later on, I, I discovered Britpop and the things that I had missed over on uh, the other side of the Atlantic while all this was going on. You gotta remember, this was kind of pre-internet. Uh, I was living on my own, well, with my wife. Um, but, you know, we were working jobs and had no money. And so I wasn't buying a whole lot and uh, I wasn't hearing a whole lot. And so, yeah, so that ended up being kind of a pit where what I heard were kind of the big hits like Sarah McLaughlin or Blues Traveler or uh, Dave Matthews Band, things that I that seemed fine. Again, almost like the James Addiction competent. Um, I think Sarah McLaughlin's a little maybe better than that. She feels like uh, something coming out of the school of Enya, uh, not quite as new age as Enya, but that kind of uh, adult contemporary mysticism um, that, again, yeah, is fine to listen to. And Possession, the, the bigger single, I think it's the bigger single uh, from this album, is still a good listen. It's a, it's a good song. And uh, most of the album is, is, again, perfectly easy to listen to. It's good. Uh, and the one is good enough, strong enough, good enough was I think the other big single from there. Um, but I picked up, uh, or I dropped, I should say, Sarah McLachlan as soon as I picked her up. Got this one album I didn't even buy Surfacing, which was her big album. Um, so she was kind of a hit straight off the bat. Uh, her first two albums both went gold um, in the US, but this one was her first kind of real big hit, I think it went three times platinum, and then Surfacing was her big one that went eight times platinum. So she was definitely a big selling artist. And those are the kind of things were, were about the only things that were breaking through to my ears at that time. But by the time I started to find Radiohead and Ben Folds, and then going back and finding Supergrass and uh, Blur and some of those type of things, uh, that uh, just, radio competence kind of fell off my radar again. And I never bought another Sarah McLachlan album, even though she's perfectly fine. She's just uh, not a super favorite of mine. But uh, so I do have the one album and she did found uh, Lilith Fair uh, along with a couple of other people. And so that remains uh, my connection, which I will pass on to Eric. So he can give uh, Sarah McLachlan a listen and come up with a connection from that, which you can look forward to watching on Monday. So anyone else who made it to the end, I thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.